Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Engineering at Queen's. In this short presentation, I hope to take you through a little bit about what civil engineering is and then also how we teach civil engineering at Queen's and how we hope to make it uh, an exciting and innovative course for you to study. So the first question we need to answer is well, what do civil engineers do? Unlike mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, which are pretty clear what the topic is, civil engineering is a little bit more vague. It's not quite like Ronsi that does what it says on the tin. You need to have an understanding of why it's called civil engineering. And the term itself comes from a time when there were only two engineers. There were military engineers and there were civil engineers. And the civil engineer did everything for the civilian population. That means that we cover a huge spectrum of topics. And civil engineering to this day is the widest ranging discipline of engineering that there is. You might wonder why I'm showing a photograph of a roller coaster. That's because that's civil engineering in practice. A roller coaster is a structure, and that structure must be designed to cope with the forces involved with, for that roller coaster cart as it flies around on the track. So that's all civil engineering in practice. One of the main things that civil engineering should do is we support life. Would you be surprised if I said to you that civil engineers save more lives than doctors? Some people would be. But the reason we save more lives than doctors is because of what you see on the screen. It's water. Civil engineers provide clean, potable water to populations. You will see the adverts on television for WaterAid, and you know about the statistics they quote about the deaths of children every minute. Uh, it's civil engineers that fix that. It's civil engineers that design and install and operate our water supply. It's civil engineers that deal with the cleanup of the mess that humanity generates on the planet. And in that way, we support life. We also shelter people from harm. It's civil engineers that make sure that you are sheltered from the elements. Be it a rainy day, be it a tropical storm, or be it a flood. So the photograph that we have here is the Thames Barrier in London, which is specifically designed to operate in a way that it saved the city of London from flooding. Civil engineers help us travel. It's civil engineers that design infrastructure that gets us from A to B. So we build bridges, we build ports, we build harbours, we build airports, all of which allows us to move around the planet. Civil engineers also help build for a sustainable future. We're heavily involved in renewable energies and from the earliest times of the Hoover Dam, which was built not only to supply water to Nevada and Arizona, but also to supply electricity as a hydroelectric power plant. That's all civil engineering. And at Civil Engineering at Queen's, we offer the widest choice of careers available. We have a B-Eng in Civil Engineering, we have an M-Eng in Civil Engineering, we have an M-Eng in Environmental and Civil Engineering, and we have an M-Eng in Structural Engineering with Architecture, all of which are accredited by the Institution of Civil Engineers and the Institution of Structural Engineers. Civil Engineering is the second most in-demand STEM subject. That means that for the next 10 years, civil engineering graduates will be in demand. So why study civil engineering at Queen's? At Queen's we deliver our course in quite an exciting and innovative way, I believe. And why, when I'm asking about Queen's and civil engineering at Queen's, would I show a picture of the Louvre? That's because the pyramid that you see there was designed by one of our graduates. It was designed by a guy called Peter Rice. Now, not many people may know the name Peter Rice, but you certainly know his designs. So, you know the Louvre Pyramid, you know the Sydney Opera House, and you know the Pompidou Centre in Paris. All designed by Peter Rice, a graduate from Queen's University Belfast Civil Engineering. Within Civil Engineering at Queen's, we teach our core subjects by way of a story. So, we take you in your first year when you know nothing about what civil engineering is, and we build the story, in this case of structures, through to when you become a graduate, you can then go and work on design buildings like this. In fact, we've had graduates that worked on both these buildings. The one on the left, you may recognize, is the Burj Khalif. It's the tallest structure on the planet. Looking at that photograph, it looks like it's a Photoshop job because 
this building is out of proportion to the buildings around it, which in themselves are skyscrapers. But it's not. That's the Burj Khalif. I was lucky to be on the viewing platform, 147, the floor, uh, and it's an amazing sight to see. The building on the right is the Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, and the towers there are curved in three dimensions, and then somebody decided that they wanted to put a ship on top of it. And I, again, I stood, luckily enough, to stand on the viewing deck at the very uh, stern of the ship, looking out over Singapore, and an old hack like me still had to wonder how they actually built it. Our, one of our other core areas is geotechnics. We can do nothing on the planet without understanding what's on the ground. Everything that we do touches the ground, so we need to understand how that reacts to what we're building. Because what we do want to happen is things like this. We do want to have another Leaning Tower of Pisa, which was a foundation failure. We do want to have landslips. So the, the photograph on the right is of a, an embankment, railway embankment failure at a mine in Australia. Our other key area then is hydraulics, which is my own subject area. And I chose these photographs on purpose because the photograph on the left appeared very much a similar photograph on a late night TV program which investigated paranormal activity. Because people sent it in and said, is this a black hole in water? And of course it's not. It's a spillway on a dam. It's civil engineering in action. Civil engineers also, in terms of your, your journey through water and understanding water, will look at coastal defences. We will look at wave energy. We'll look at how uh, we can protect the environment from the huge impacts that storms and waves have on our coastline. Our fourth and final main core area is the environment. Everything that we do as a civil engineer it impacts on the planet. We need to make sure that we deal with that in a sustainable and in a sympathetic way. So all of our courses have a huge element now of environmental impact and assessment within them. At Queen's we also teach things in a slightly different way to most universities. A standard university will have its semester of 12 weeks where every week is identical. At Queen's we've turned that on its head. At Queen's we have split our years up into blocks. So our students undertake a teaching block, followed by an activity block, followed by a teaching block, and another activity block. And in those activity blocks, they then put into practice the information that they have learned in the teaching block. So it's then you will do your labs, it's then you will do your other pro, uh, problem-based learning activities in small groups. There is a video uh, on one of those, it's called the Bridge Project at Stage 1, and I would recommend you watch it to see an example of what I'm talking about there. A big part of civil engineering is all about design. Our design exercises have to be challenging, have to be innovative, but they should also be fun. As a typical example of the sort of things that we do, we tasked our students with designing canoes that were made out of concrete. Now everyone will know that if you put a piece of concrete into the river, it will sink. So one of the first tasks they had to overcome was the ability to make sure the concrete floated which was all about buoyancy. But not only that, the concrete canoe had to function as a canoe. It had to be hydrodynamically shaped. So while I'm quite happy that our students turn out to be good engineers, I'm less confident that they turn out to be good canoeists, as you can clearly see. So it was an example of where we took an exercise that could have been simply paper-based, but we put it into practice and we allowed our students to excel and actually build the canoes and take them out to the river. And you can see there they are uh, canoeing away, having a great time of it. And that's just a typical thing of the way we try to approach our learning here at the university. But our exercises are not only fun, they're also award-winning. Every year there are national competitions that are entered by every single civil engineering department across the UK and our students regularly win or are placed in those competitions. At Queen's we have a whole range of people here to make sure that your experience is the best that it can be. Every student is, is assigned a personal tutor. Each year has an advisor of studies. 
there to make sure that that year functions smoothly and the students on the year have no problems and if problems should arise we work with them to find solutions. Each program has a degree coordinator to make sure the program functions across various years. We have a director of education in the school and we have me as the head of civil engineering overseeing the programs to make sure your experience is exactly what it should be. We also take part and a peer mentoring scheme. The peer mentoring scheme is where our second year students mentor our first year students. Our second year students will have just completed the experience that you as a new first year student will be undertaking and therefore they are best placed to advise you and help you in your transition to university life and it's really successful. We're also very proud that in civil engineering we have 32% of our student population is female students. That may not sound like an awful lot in a, in a society where the population should be 50-50, but within the civil engineering uh, spectrum, most universities are sitting at around half that percentage, and we're working hard to increase it year on year. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you find this video useful, and I look forward to seeing you as a student at Queen's in the near future. Thank you.